Maybe start off by saying I know basically nothing about the Summer Night series, only these two spin-off games. I played these two games a whole lot, and as I do who knows nothing about the main series games, I still had a lot of fun. I do know a third game does exist, it just never came out to the west, and you know, that explains why I never played it. I do know a fan patch does exist for, you know, the English version, but it wasn't really fully done, at least when I saw like two years ago, and I don't really think it is done, but I don't know because I haven't checked on it, but still, last time I saw it two years ago, wasn't done. But I still do think whatever we did get, it's still really fun, and I really still am glad that I stumbled upon them. But of course, in this case, I'll be talking about the first games. It's funny enough, this is actually one of the few games I actually started with the first game because, you know, with Naruto games, the Resident Evil series, Devil May Cry, I just started with like completely different games other than the first one, but still, I only think that matters since, you know, not all of them are really connected. So, even in this case, the first game isn't really connected to the second game, but they do share the same mechanics. But still, I just found funny how this is one of the few series I actually started with the first game. But other than those ramblings, Let's actually get into the video. The story is one that is pretty simple if I have to say so myself. It's basically where you have to follow the protagonist, either Claro or Pratty, in becoming a new craft lord since the previous one that was your father went missing or I think died, I don't remember exactly, but still. You had to go through a tournament to see who is the best craft knight to become the next master, along with also sealing the monster that lives under the maze-like tower that is called the Labyrinth. How you do this is by gathering four different swords that your father hid and then also doing some other stuff later on because you know this is a 20 hour-ish JRPG so you know there has to be other stuff to it. But frankly I do think that this game does an alright job grabbing you in at least from the start and there are some really nice twists here and there so I won't really spoil it and I really wish at least you guys looked up this game by yourselves just because I do think it's pretty decent. I also think the characters in this game are somewhat likable, some of my favorites have to be Vral, Sugar, Rasho, and your master Braun. I also do think the characters by the end have all the right uh, development and I think it's really fun to see them on screen and talk to each other. The graphics of the first game also look pretty nice. The character portraits look really nice and along with the sprites and I think the environments look really amazing. I think some of the better parts to me that look really nice have to be the main city, the volcano, and numerous areas where you do battle because the like the backgrounds of them look really really nice. Also speaking of battles, I think the game really handles it well. It's set in a 2D plane and it's really smooth to play. I think it's really simple just to get the hang of it since you know you can only move left and right and also jump by you know putting the D-pad up. But the GBA handles it really well since you again only really need one attack button because it's so simple. The B button actually acts as two different buttons where you can actually guard or cast magic and you do that by either pressing the L button to swap you know like uh, your different uh, abilities like you can have it set on guard or you can swap over the healing spell to quickly use that and then you can also press the R button to actually switch your weapon mid battle. You can swap up to three different weapons and frankly I actually do really think again this is really smooth it's all real time so you don't have to really spend time waiting and I really did think they handled it really well since there's not really much downtime in battles. Another thing I really do like about this game is that it has support conversations and at first I wasn't expecting it but now that I do know about it, it's pretty cool. You get to learn more about these characters that you don't normally get to learn in the main story which again adds some really cool depth to them. And you actually get to choose who you really hang out with just because I guess you know like you, you do have the freedom and because like at the end of the day you could just choose to go to its own location and then that character will always be there and you know you could just see your favorite character a lot more often. This also kind of changes the ending where say whoever you hang it out with the most just appears with you and you have a soul conversation at the end of the game which I also find pretty cool. Another thing I really did like was the Guardian Beast or at least the function in battle because frankly like you can customize them a lot just depending on what skills you want in battle at a time. For example like you can have the healing spell, the defense spell, like a lot of support spells just so you can actually do better in battle yourself 
or you could just go all out offense. For me, I usually have at least one healing spell and then usually have offense just because some enemies are weak to other skills and some enemies are resistant so I can just you know, like just find out what the enemy is resistant to and just not use that and then use the other ones. And I admit, I don't really like some of them like story wise but I'll probably get into that a little bit later but still, gameplay wise, I still think this system is also really fun to experiment with. This game still really is fun to me no matter how much times I play it and honestly no matter what there will be some problems that just stick out to me, some of them are big and some of them are really minor. One of the problems is that this game looks muddy like I guess if anything you can compare it to this guy 1 where the color palette is just really like dog and just looks like just mud was put on it I guess. Like it only really affects the overall, the Kyoto and some of the sprites but still I can kinda get used to it I just don't really like it as much. Then there's the weapon system, or at least how simple it is. As I mentioned, you all you really need to do is grind out weapons, and frankly that's really it. There's not really much variety other than that. At most you can add a special element like fire or whatever else to your weapon, but each weapon has their own element attached to it and all you need to do is grind out that special material to give it the element and frankly I think it gets boring really fast. Weapons just feel very much like each other and they don't really feel unique because each weapon eventually just gets replaced by a stronger version and that kind of sucks because the second game kind of did a little bit better where they have like a an upgrade system where you can actually say say upgrade a weapon with a certain effect added to it and that way you can make it more special and frankly this game doesn't do it terribly it's just you know it's really simple and each weapon just doesn't really feel that much different from each other. And then we move on to the story and frankly it's really simple as I said before. And don't get me wrong, I think the events in the story are really nice, it's just that, again, it's really, really basic. It's very reminiscent of older Final Fantasies where you just go collect four different objects and then kill the final boss, which does kind of work, but again, not a lot of people might enjoy it and I still really do like it because of the characters, but again, I kind of wish it was just a little bit more deep. The last thing I really disliked about this game was some of the Guardian Beasts because frankly, I only find half of them good. The two I like are Sugar and Rasho, but mostly just because they actually can speak. Xantek and Kitty can't really speak the human language and frankly I think it brings it down just because they can't really talk and you know it's just not they only have much character. And frankly I do like Xantek a little bit better because you know he actually is a kind being but Cuddy just hits you all the time and it's really annoying to me and again as I said they are just really lacking characters and I don't really think they bring much to the story. I admit the last one is just a really personal thing just because I wish that those two were better since the second game does the, all the Guardian Beasts pretty decently it's just you know they didn't really have much in this game at least for the two Guardian Beasts. And some of the other things like as I said with the sprites not all of them are really bad but again I just don't really like the color palette as much. But even then this game still is really fun no matter what I don't like about it and I really do wish that you gave it a try. And frankly I think it's a really charming Game Boy Advance game and if you can find a copy for cheap and if you have a working Game Boy Advance you should try it out sometime. Another thing I really kind of didn't like was the fact that the game can feel kind of easy and what I mean by that is that the weapons always recharge their durability at the end of the battle which doesn't sound so bad but you know you can really just go in with like the strongest weapons and if you just get close to finishing the durability, you can just swap to your next weapon, use that until it gets close to dead, and then swap to your last one and use that, and spam magic skills, and then, you know, there's not really a lot of strategy, because all you have to do is just go in blazing and do it, because actually the second game kind of changed that, which I do like, and I'll talk about that when I get to the second game, but this game to me feels a lot more easier, and it, you just really don't really have to think about it all that much, as long as you don't break the weapon, so, you know, there's that. But as always, we actually should go for the likes and dislikes before we end the video. Likes, fun gameplay, good characters, simple story to get into, open the weapon system, and also really nice support conversations. Dislikes, bad colors, weapons feel the same in their own class, really simple story premise, half the Guardian Beasts aren't really too interesting, and really easy at points, oh just really easy in most cases. But regardless, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time.